day. I'm Rapstein of Linen Associates with your metals market wrap up and this is for Monday and we are now at the 30th of December 2019 just after 5 p.m. Central Time which means we're into the new trading session for Tuesday already. Remember the markets, many of them reopen just after 5 p.m. Central Time. It's nice to be back. What weather? I was near 70 degree weather when I was down in uh, Tennessee. Driving back through Illinois, same thing, but we are gonna get snow tomorrow. So you can see how, how the weather is shifting. Eventually old man winter comes back, but what a fabulous December it was in terms of warmth. Now in the marketplace, if you're trying to make heads and tails out of this market in the last day and a half of trading, which was Monday and tomorrow we close early, remember that, don't. You're gonna have your hands full as you get into the beginning of the year anyways with some people dying to take some taxes in some of their stocks because if they do it after the 1st of January, those taxes on capital gains, whatever, don't come due until April of 2021. So they really get quite a bit of, of time and I, I'm betting that there'll be some people that wanna do that. In the metal markets, we continue to see the year end wrap up, but it's been a very, very good year for the gold market that's bounced back at least a bit. Platinum, of course, was a stellar performer. Foreign currencies are a little bit of everywhere right now. And I'm gonna repeat what I just said. If you're trying to make something at this time of the year, the last half a day of full trading that ends tomorrow, don't. It's that simple. You're either positioned or you're not, and that's how I feel about it. When we look at the gold market, as I said, it's made a return. It's come off the 1459 level that it made back in December. And for those of you that saw my gold report that I issued now almost three and a half weeks ago, you tell me about the timing that I had given you in that one, and I think I'm even impressed that it worked out as nice as it did. But the market did what we were looking for. It's come back up. Will it be able to get up and over the 152660 level that it recently made? Could. The market's got a strong seasonal that's still going for it. We don't know what the U.S.-Chinese trade deal is going to do. We have impeachment hearings coming ahead of us. We don't know where that's going to quite head. There's just a lot of unknowns. And the dollar's been getting weaker, which is beneficial to the gold as well. As we take a look at a daily bar chart, is there any doubt, and this is when I left town. Okay, so this was Friday, December 20th. And here's the market as it starts lifting itself up. I was not here for the Monday trade and on. And here's your breakout level. You finally got over these numbers. Now, this is still a resistance zone. Don't not assume that. You do have a resistance zone up here. The market's working its way into it and stalling just a little bit as it's getting into that zone. When we take a look at what the swing line is doing, it's clear that it's been higher lows, higher highs, that is bullish. What else? We can see that the market got up to and stalled when I was gone at the 100-day average, and that was last Tuesday, just before Christmas. The market resumed the rally right after Christmas, and since then it's still moving higher. Now, you don't yet have what we call the bullish crossover of moving averages, where the 18 gets over the 100, but it would not surprise me that over in early January, this market tries to make a run for that. When we look at Bollinger Bands, while I was gone, I was putting out my subscriber video for uh, my, my subscribers, obviously. And once we got up here, I said, be careful, you're into this Bollinger Band 100-day average and the market's able to pop through it. And today you're pulling back underneath the Bollinger Band and you're there tonight, not a surprise. What else? Well, now the 100-day average might become something of a support zone. In addition, I think you have to look at all this. This was your base now. Until these, this area is taken out, I think longer term traders are going to look at this market with a very favorable eye and think that a low of serious proportion could be in place in the gold market. When we take a look at the slow stochastics, which is a momentum oscillator, it's made up of two lines called a K and a D, the red and the blue. And when they're going sideways over 80 for several days in a row. Let's not look at today's action, but let's look at the close of business on Monday. Today being tonight, which is Tuesday's action. 
Both numbers are over 80, as you can see, and we'll look at them right here. You can see how they work there. Both were over 80 and both were over 80 Thursday. So we had Thursday, Friday, and Monday. That's your embedded reading. That tells me that until this red line closes back under 80, the odds are very strong that on pullbacks, the trade's going to try to be a buyer in the market looking for higher prices. That's why I'm, I'm looking hard at that 100-day average as being potential support. Let's get to the GLD if I can get the chart to come up. There we are. And you can see this market's also fighting at the upper Bollinger Band. It cleared it. It's got its embedded reading. Very similar in its nature. Notice the sideways action here and the breakout. So I have the same feeling in this market that the 100-day average is going to be something of a support zone. The gold-silver ratio, and this is Feb Gold versus March Silver, peaked out in the 88 zone. You're back to the 84 level. But more important to me is that the market could be long-term looking at this as a major, major top having formed first back here and in different waves, the market isn't able to build on itself. So can this gold-silver ratio change in favor of the silver is the question. And if it does, generally if the base metals are moving, the precious metals move with it. When we come first to the GDX, you can see how the mining stocks have moved out. And this all happened while I was again gone. You broke out to the upside. This is the week I was gone. When I left, the market was in this area. The juniors are also in an uptrend. Are we embedded? No, we're overbought. You see that slow stochastic reading in that one? That is not embedded. So we have a market where I think the pros are grabbing some profits up here. I'd be looking at that very carefully and see if they're doing that, in fact. Silver has converted into what? Well, let's get rid of today's action. And let's go uh, instead to you closed on Monday, which I know it's awkward because I'm on Monday, but I'm talking Tuesday trade. You've got both numbers over 80, you had both over 80, over 80. That tells me that this market, like the gold, will look at these moving averages as key. Until that red line closes back under 80, I expect the pros to be buying. Now, I'm the first to tell you, it's hard to tell you anything over New Year's. This is not a religious holiday where some markets in the world are open, others aren't. This is a world holiday and financial bourses as they're called in other places in our futures markets. They will be closed come Wednesday and we'll walk back into whatever is going to be. In the copper market, I'm a bit disappointed, and you should be. You're losing your embedded reading. Now, this is how you finish today. In early trade tonight, you're losing that. Now, I'd be paying attention because you might be headed back to this 18-day average of closes at 279.50, 55 to figure out what's going on. Very important to me is the market had this breakout and isn't mounting anything from there, even with word that a Vice Premier Liu is coming into the United States this week, that's what was in the media today, to sign the phase one deal with the Trump administration. Okay, that's big news. Why is the market not responding upwards? Could be the holiday. I don't put a lot of weight on anything going into New Year's. You don't know what the book squaring is going to be. You don't know what different traders have on their mind. I'd leave that alone and address the market as we get into the new year afterwards. Platinum market was able today to say, okay, higher lows, higher highs. I'm back in an uptrend. I am overbought. You hit the upper Bollinger Band. You've stalled against it. In the plat uh, Palladium market, when I left, I, w I, I had said, it wouldn't surprise me if the market just wants to get back up to that 18-day average, maybe hang in that area. And the reason is this was the stellar performer metal. Nothing has changed about supply demand in it, but booking of profits, year-end squaring. I'm not going to try to second-guess it. In the dollar index, the market suddenly peaked out, and it peaked itself out when I was gone right here. It got up to the 100-day average, so between the 18 and the 100s, the resistance. This was last Monday. Then the market started stalling and showing that in an overbought condition. It, on Thursday, started down. Friday, it just fell apart. So now I'm looking for the lower Bollinger Band, which you hit today, and I think the pros would be taking some money off the table. Would not surprise me. I want to remind you, we write about all this, and we write about it in a 
big, important way. We cover a lot of territory between what I put out as my research, what the firm puts out, and they cover these markets, be it the option strategy parts of it, what's going on. We're seasoned. I mean, look at the hair. I've been doing this since 1969. That does not mean what I write is going to come true, but I think you'll find that we cover these markets in a way that pros cover these markets. This isn't our first rodeo. We've been around this, and we cover all these different sectors in the markets. In the financial arena is where we're covering the metal markets and so on. If you haven't seen what we write, getting our special reports, and we put them out all day long. They come right into your mailbox. This is what our clients get. We won't just give you and put you on a list. You can try it and that's it. If you haven't tried it in a while, write us. We'll be happy if you haven't tried it in a year to re uh, refresh you with it. How do you get this? Go to our website, sign up for the free offer. You can call us as well at this number. My brokers will take care of it. We'll be on a skeleton crew tomorrow, as you can imagine. I'm in covering for some of the brokers. And as you can see right here, if you click this icon on uh, YouTube, it'll take you right to the free offer page. In the meantime, if you don't see me tomorrow, and I will be here doing these updates, you have a great new year. I appreciate you all watching us, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care now.